hip hop, how you doing lady? Now would it be cliche for me to say you drive me crazy? Even if it's literal, sleepless nights and restless days. Steady searching for the perfect words to fit the page. Plotting and thinking, I call that rhyme scheming. On how to be a dude who doing more than he dreaming. On how to show you all on what LeBron was to Cleveland. And you see him not the head cause all my people agreeing, uh. You my angel, but you came from my demons. If God made me eye, can I blend? Not even. I'm supposed to stand out, need no handouts. You made plans, but see how that panned out. They faked it till they made it, now you're sitting in doubt. Guess I gotta show you what a real rapper talk about. I got this little hook, heard it make the lady shout. So before you call me not, ask you trying to hit me out like, baby, it's you. You the one I love. You don't think I see. Hip hop, you put my love on top. Hip hop is my only hope. I remember being a seventh grader and naively thinking this to myself while beating on desks and dreaming of being a rap star and writing corny, terrible raps. <laughs> and I remember hip hop being my only hope becoming a very real reality for me in the summer of 2012. During this summer, I was going through a deep depression. I lost a lot of family members. I worked two jobs that I hated on top of a lot of other things that really were down on me. On one particular day, I was so down that I decided I would take my life. I did not know how I was going to go about doing so, but I knew that when I got home, this would be the end. When I walked into my house, there were a bunch of people in my living room, which just added to my irritation. My roommates had invited some friends over, and as I went up the stairs to my room, my friend Ashley stopped me and she said, hey, Dexter, Dexter's my real name, by the way. She said, hey, Dexter, <laughs> hey, Dexter, you got to hear this song. I'm like, no, I'm finna go to my room. She said, no, 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 you gotta check it out. It's by Jay-Z and Kanye West. And she knew that Jay-Z and Kanye were my favorite rappers. So I decided I guess I could take a second and check it out. The song that she was showing me was Click by Kanye West featuring Big Sean and Jay-Z. Anybody know this song? Ain't nobody messing with my click. <laughs> click, click. All right. Um, so as the song played, I kind of started vibing like I was vibing right now. The beat was really nice. Nodded my head to it. Big Sean rapped first, Jay-Z second, and then my favorite rapper of all time, Kanye, took third. As Kanye's verse started, he rapped about typical Kanye stuff, how cool he is, living next door to Tom Cruise, owning a speedboat, and being married to Kim Kardashian. <laughs> but in the last eight bars of the verse, he said words that have stuck with me ever since that moment. The lyrics go, I went through deep depression when my mama passed. Suicide, what kind of talk is that? At that moment, I knew that I was put there for a specific reason. And from that day forth, I've never contemplated taking my life again. And from that day forth, I've dedicated my whole entire life to creating intricately and intentionally beautiful music with hopes of motivating, motivating anybody who I can get to listen. Now. For people like me and others trying to make great hip-hop music that can change the world, there are a few setbacks. Some of those setbacks, or one of those huge setbacks, is misinterpretations of the hip-hop genre. Now, by a show of hands, how many rap fans do I have in the room? This light is bright, I need your hands high. I can't really, okay, okay, it's a nice, okay. Now, by a show of your left hands, how many hip-hop fans do we have in the room? Some people are probably confused. Now, by a show of hands, how many people know the difference between rap music and hip hop music? I like as they like all short, like down. <laughs> so I'm going to give you the definition of them. Rap. The word rap is a verb. The action of reciting words in verse form, mostly in a more melodic and rhythmic pattern than poetry, and not always, but mostly accompanied by some form of background instrumentation. I made up that definition, by the way. Now, hip-hop, according to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, is a subculture especially of inner-city youth who are typically devotees of rap music. Dictionary.com defines hip-hop as the popular subculture of big city teenagers, which includes rap music, breakdancing, and graffiti art. Um, dictionary.com's definition is very accurate. So hip-hop is a culture, and the four elements of that culture are b-boying, which is breakdancing, graffiti art, uh, DJing, which is not on there, and then MCing, aka rapping. Now, I was going to break dance for y'all, but my pants are kind of tight, so I didn't really, you know, I didn't know how that would turn out. 
And if I do graffiti, they probably gonna hold back my degree. Um, so I'ma just, I, that's why I started it with the rap, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So, with hip-hop, it started off as a beautiful representation, a tangible representation of the artistic renaissance that took place in New York in the 70s and 80s. Once record executives realized that one of those four elements, MCing slash rapping, could be a cash cow, they milked it for everything that they could. Now, like anything done out of greed, the art of rapping then became the simple act of rapping. I'll say that one more time. The art of rapping became the simple act of rapping. Making music strictly for financial gain and commercial appeal, with no background to it, no heart or soul to it. This is what I believe causes the misconceptions toward hip hop music, mistaking rap music, like Panda, 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 for hip hop music, like Jay-Z, Kanye West, Kendrick Lamar, people who are still making commercially successful hip hop while sticking to the roots of the culture, but also building on those roots. Now, luckily for us hip hop artists, there are people working every day to kind of take away some of those stereotypes. Anybody ever heard of rapgenius.com? Yeah, oh, he got so excited. He's like, yes, I checked it out. So rapgenius.com was created in 2009 by three Yale University graduates. It was created with the intent of bridging the gap between lyricists and the people who take in those lyrics. Now, as a lyricist, I can tell you one of the most painful things is sitting down intentionally, like I said in the beginning, intention, intentionally and intricately writing a song and having somebody say to you, oh, I don't really know what they're talking about. I just like the beat. You know you've said that before. Somebody <laughs> has said it before. Um, it, it, it hurts to hear that or to put out a song with a purpose and then have somebody completely miss it. So what RapGenius.com allowed for users to do is to upload lyrics, but what made it different was is that you can create a profile. Users can create profiles and then you can annotate the lyrics of your favorite songs. In these annotations, other users can get on there and give them either a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Basically saying, yeah, that's what that rapper meant, or no, you're wrong, buddy. Now, artists can have verified accounts like Eminem, Chance the Rapper, Kanye West, I'm gonna say his name a lot, Kanye West. And they can go on there and say, yes, this is exactly what I meant when I wrote this song, or even annotate the lyrics on their own. In 2014, Rap Genius rebranded itself as Genius.com and now covers genres like pop, rock, country, has transcripts of famous speeches like the I Have a Dream speech, and even news events, and then a section called X where random stuff that doesn't fit into any of those categories can go. And you can check out the annotations of your favorite things. I really, really suggest you download that app. It's dope. I say that word a lot too. Um, now, another awesome, awesome thing that happened was a documentary in entitled Something From Nothing, The Art of Rap. This documentary was executive produced and created by Ice-T in 2012 and was heralded at the Sundance Film Festival. The Art of Rap basically takes hip hop from the beginning, the seed that's planted, and goes to a bunch of different artists from Grandmaster Cass, who I'm sure nobody in here knows, to Eminem, who I'm sure everybody in here knows, and sits down with them and talks to them about how they create their music, what made them fall in love with hip hop, and what hip hop is all about. And I think it's a beautiful representation of this culture that I just explained hip hop really, really holds on to and is built on. And I really strongly suggest you check out The Art of Rap. It used to be on Netflix. I found out the other day it's not anymore, but Google it. It's Google's God, so you'll find it. Um, now, there are hip-hop artists that are also using their influence in hip-hop music to make changes in the world on a daily basis and once again kill those stereotypes through action and not just through their words. The Sean Carter Foundation, founded by Jay-Z, whose real name is Sean Carter, has a scholarship fund. They give out scholarships to people age 25 or under with a minimum 2.0 GPA requirement. 77% of Sean Carter Foundation scholars represent household incomes of less than $40,000 per year. And 59% of those students who earn those scholarships are living under the national poverty level. Which means that Jay-Z is literally building opportunities for the future for youth in higher education. And as we sit in a place of higher education, I'm sure that's something we can clap for. And I can truly say, if one of those scholars were right here, they can tell you that hip-hop 
was probably their only hope. Without this scholarship, they may not have ever went to school and they may not have ever moved forward with their futures, but Jay-Z gave them a chance. Speaking of chance, that was so cool. Speaking of chance, there's this guy named Chance the Rapper. Chance the Rapper is from the south side of Chicago, where I also am from. Um, and he's doing a lot of big things as an independent hip hop artist. He's been on Saturday Night Live twice within the last couple years. Um, and he also started a series of open mics in Chicago called Open Mic, with mic being spelled M-I-K-E instead of M-I-C. These open mics were created in memoriam or memorandum of a guy named Brother Mike who curated the open mic at the Harold Washington Library in downtown Chicago up until his passing in November of 2014. A lot of artists such as Mick Jenkins, Chance the Rapper, Vic Mensa, came through that open mic series in Harold Washington and Brother Mike gave them the opportunity to express themselves and the confidence to do it gratefully and masterfully. Actually, fun fact, U Media, which is the name of the open mic that used to be at Harold Washington, was the first place I ever performed in Chicago. My performance was terrible. But Brother Mike still made me feel good about what I was doing. He was really nice. And it's really nice to see Chance doing this for high school youth in the city. Um, another great organization in Chicago that's working to show hip hop for the beautiful culture that it is, that I'm really, really connected to, is an organization called Donda's House, named after Dr. Donda West, the late mother of Kanye West. Donda's House creates premium arts opportunities and education for youth in the city and older people in the city up to age 25 who are doing music, dance, hip hop, anything, whatever you can think of, any type of art. It has classes for that and it gives opportunities. Through Donda's House, this is a picture of us uh, out of graduation, it's a little blurry, but I actually had the chance to be a part of one of their programs last spring called the Got Bars program, which, re which was created by Kanye West and Che Rhymefest Smith, Kanye's best friend and the writer of Jesus Walks and Glory. Um, which was a song featured in the film Selma. Um, and I got a chance to be a part of that class and it taught us really how to perform our music better and how to be better artists. Um, this is me pictured with Rhyme Fest and then his wife, Miss Donnie Smith, is actually the executive director of Donda's House. Donna's house is named in the likeness of Dr. Donda West, like I said, and one great thing about her is that she was an educator before her passing in 2007. She uh, was tenured at Chicago State University and she stood on a principle called Share Your Truth. When Kanye and Ryan Fest would be in the basement of her house making rap music, I remember Fest telling us that they used to want to talk about being thugs. And one day, Dr. West came down there and told them, like, yo, y'all not thugs. Just share your truth. Whoever you are, whatever you want to be, be it to the fullest, and always express yourself truthfully and rightfully. In November of 2015, this past November, a teenager named Laquan McDonald was gunned down, shot 16 times by the Chicago Police Department in Chicago, Illinois. When I watched the video of his shooting, it prompted me to share my truth and the truth of the people living on the south and west sides of Chicago. And I sat down to write a song entitled On My Back. The first verse in the hook of On My Back were dedicated to Laquan McDonald and my intent, like I said, to intentionally and intricately create motivational music was to not only be a fight song for the city, but to be a song to show Chicago for how beautiful it is despite what you may hear on the news or see in the newspapers. Now, I wrote the first verse in the hook and then I kind of took a break. Went on winter break and over winter break, something tragic happened that made me feel like I had to finish writing this song immediately. During this past winter break, one former Northern, Northern Illinois University student and a current student lost their lives in Chicago due to Chicago's violence. Laquan McDonald, I'm sorry, Quintonio LeGrere was shot by police, and a week prior to that, Joseph Graves was killed um, in gun violence also. Once I heard about the passing of two students who I saw on a daily basis, frequenting the wreck where I used to work, or Expression, which is an organization I'm very closely tied to, once I saw that these people had lost their lives, I felt like it was my duty to make sure I finished this song and put it out, to tell the stories of the people going through it in Chicago. Hip hop is our only hope. The news does not tell our stories correctly. The newspaper does not tell our story correctly. There's so much more to Chicago and other big inner cities dealing with these things that you may never ever know. But if you don't tune into the source, you'll go on your entire life not knowing. And one of the key sources is hip hop music. Hip hop music comes directly from the streets. 
Yes, I'm from the street. Yes, I'm from Chicago. I am not a thug. I'm the furthest thing from it. But I grew up in Chicago. I've seen a dead body while riding the bus. I've seen three dead bodies in my life just going about my day, all of them from, from gun violence. And when I say hip hop is our only hope, I don't just mean the people living in the inner city. I mean ours and everybody in this room right now. Because once that violence hits home and hits somebody who's a part of this family at Northern Illinois University, as humanitarians and lovers of life, it becomes our duty to make sure we understand their stories, where they come from, and make the future better for those coming behind them from the same city that that person lost their life in. So I commission everybody in this audience who did not raise their hand when I asked were you a fan of hip hop, or who did not raise their hand when I asked were you a rap fan, to please listen to somebody who's telling a story. Listen to somebody who's trying to be a source of truth for the people living in these big cities that are going through it. Not only talking about the bad things, but the beautiful things about Chicago too. In the second verse of On My Back, I talk about a place called Uncle Remus and Harold's. Two chicken shacks in the city, one of them on the west side and one of them on the south side. I'm from the south side, so you know which one I like. <laughs> it's a beautiful debate that Chicagoans go about and go through every single day. You'll hear them argue about it all the time. But that's also included in the music, the positives that you may miss in the news. So, like I said, hip hop is our only hope. And once we believe in it as such, then we can truly move forward together. Forward. Thank you.